And Father, in the name of Jesus, we just want to thank you tonight. Father, we're just so humbled as your sons. Once again, Father God, to be able to come and to gather as your sons in your presence. Lord, to come humbly, Father God, and to bow our hearts, bow our soul, our minds. Father, to, to yield ourselves. Uh, Father, to submit ourselves uh, under your mighty hand. Father, we are so humble. You said that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Father, we thank you. We reverence and we honor you. Father, you're the source of all wisdom. You're the source of all knowledge. You're the source of all understanding. Father, we're so humbled that as sons of God that you have re are revealing your son in us. You said that we might declare him in the earth. Father, we thank you for that light. We thank you for the revelation of the Holy Spirit. The spirit of truth. You said he would come, Master. You said he would be with us and he would be in us forever. Hallelujah. The comforter, the paracletos, the one who was called alongside to bear us up. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And show us things to come. We thank you, Holy Spirit, even as we're, we're endeavoring to learn about you, learn about your office, learn about your assignment, that the very one that we're learning about will reveal himself to us himself. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, tonight. We thank you so much for this tonight, that we have ears to hear, hearts to receive, the engrafted word, which is able to save our souls. Glory to God and to build us up in the very inheritance that's laid up for us in Christ. So we thank you tonight. We give you praise for it tonight, Father. In Jesus the Christ's name, amen. Amen. Praise amen. God. Amen. amen, amen. So we're on lesson number 31. Uh, as I said, we're going to be on this for a few weeks. Uh, we're talking about our precious friend. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit of God. Amen. Praise God. And so lesson 31, the gift of the Holy Spirit. Nabi, you want to start reading for us, dear beloved? Mm -hmm. the, the gift of the Holy Spirit. The old covenant God had manifested himself to Israel as one God. This was a startling revelation to man at a time when he was surrounded by a sea of polyism, a polytheism. Then after many centuries, when God came to earth in the person of his son, he was presented as three in one. As, as we study the life of Christ, we are conscious of the three who are one. Amen. At the beginning of Christ's public life, at his baptism, the voice of the Father spoke out of the heaven. This is my beloved son, Matthew three seventeen. And the spirit descended visibly upon him in the form of a dove. Here, a threefold revelation of God is given to man on the level of his physical senses. In Christ's teaching, preaching, and private conversation, he constantly spoke of his father and himself as two distinct persons and yet declared equally. He said, I am the Father, our one, John 10, 30. Again, he said, he that hath seen me, both seen the Father, John 14 and 9. Amen. Stop there, man. I mean, it's just so powerful. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, as we were saying in terms of the, you know, trying to, in the natural mind, trying to understand the triunity of God, you know, that the natural mind can't really comprehend that. And you know, one, one of the things that happened to me as a young man, when I was trying to understand things like that, when someone, a Christian, would, would talk to me about that, and they would tell mm -hmm. me, they say, Jesus is God. I said, yeah, but right. then who is he talking to then? He talking to God. So my mind was, you know, analytically, I'm like, hold up, but if he's God, then how is he talking to God? You know, and so I never was really able to get a, a, a an answer, you know, right. from them regarding that. And then as I got in the church, then you had, um, you know, you have different denominations, uh, and you would have people who were saying that that Jesus, uh, Jesus is God, and you say, okay, he's God, then then 
What about God that he's talking to? And they would say things like, no, 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 that's the same God. You understand what I'm saying? It was, yeah. they couldn't yeah. really explain <laughs> from scripture, you know, or share it where the Holy Spirit then could give revelation to a person. We understand, number one, because if you're not born again, Okay, if you're not born again, the Bible said, then you cannot perceive, see, or understand the ways of the kingdom. Right. Okay? So that's why the new birth is so uh, so important. Yeah, and because now, it's so now, important. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Not now, if I hear that now, I say he's talking to himself. Mm -hmm. Amen. He mm -hmm. is. You're talking to yourself. Amen. Listen, listen. I'm glad you said that because that that is. The, the thing that confused me, and you just confused me when you said that. No, no, hear, hear me out. Hear me out. Because if, if, and just as it said there, remember we just now read there, it said that it is three distinct persons. Okay? Three distinct persons. So he's not talking, when he's talking to his father, he's not talking to himself. He's talking to his father. Father. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? And that's what you, I'm glad you said that, because that's what used to confuse me. You know what I'm saying? That, that again, I'm thinking about Ghidra with the three-headed monster. <clears throat> you, you know, I got this, 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 my own limited thinking. You know, trying to phantom and understand the Godhead and my, my natural understanding. You know what I mean? And so now I'm saying it doesn't make sense to me. But part of that was because if biblically, I don't see biblically just what we talked about a minute ago. The father talked about the coming of the son. The son mm -hmm. came and talked about the father. About the father. Mm -hmm. Okay. Before he got ready to leave, he talked about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Okay. Yeah. He didn't talk. He made sure that each person was identified yeah. as an individual. Yeah. See, as an individual, right. the Holy Spirit comes, as we say. He's talking about the Father, and he's talking about the Son. <laughs> he ain't talking about himself. You see. No. So, uh huh. Mm -hmm. Not, right. not only that, even at the at the cross, when he was on the cross, he looked up and he said, Father, why have you forsaken me? Mm -hmm. You know, you know what I'm saying? Well, he can't, <laughs> he wasn't forsaken himself. <laughs> Amen. You see what I'm saying? So, so, but this is, this is so, this is so good. It's so good because again, um, this is a lot of confusion even because, like I said, coming out of that, I know a lot of the teaching that a lot of these young men been hearing over the years because we were the ones that started that stuff back then. You know what I mean? So, so I understand a lot of that, you know, with that teaching, you know, about that. But when we begin, as you said earlier, Kenny, when we begin to go back to the root, when we go back to the beginning, it starts all making sense. It starts mm -hmm. all making sense. Now... For me to try to, again, to try to explain to somebody that's not born again, try to explain to somebody whose spirit is not alive to God, okay, mm -hmm. that blood has not been on their account. They have not been granted access by the, to have the spirit of truth living in them. Then it won't make, excuse me, it won't make sense. No. <laughs> but it makes sense to, to us now, excuse me, now that we're saved. Yeah. You see? The Holy Spirit, you know when you're talking the Holy Spirit, you're talking the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's you're right. talking to Jesus, you're talking to Jesus. When you're talking to the Abba, you're talking to Abba. <laughs> See? And, and it's beautiful. Because, again, when you have three, three distinct personalities. See? No less God, no less God. <laughs> no less deity. You see? But personality, that's what makes you your personality. That's what this thing, me and you, all of us here are spirit. You know, we're right. living in the flesh body, but we're right. spirit. Right. But each one of Amen. us, have, we have our own different personalities. Different personality. Mm. Amen. <laughs> I was thinking about that today. Remember the old, the old question? The old question that was asked, uh, you know, with the chicken and the egg, which one came first? Oh, uh, which one came first? You know, and before, I, that used to stump me. No, I mean, you know, it would sound so deep. You know, now you're trying to scratch in your head. 
Okay, but if I say the chicken came first, then they're going to say, then how did the chicken come and chickens come from eggs? You, you know what I mean? If the chickens come from eggs, then how, how in the world did the chicken come before the egg? And then if the egg is there, how did the egg get there without a chicken? <laughs> you, you understand? So, so, so it would kind of stump you, you know, thinking about it. But then, then when you get revelation from the word of God, you begin to understand. I'll give you a case in point. When God created Adam, after he created Adam, how many more men did God create? How many more? How many more men did God create after he created Adam? No more. Excuse me? Don't, don't act like you're scared to talk now. What, what do you say? No, no. No, no, no. Adam created Adam. Everything else went on after that. I didn't find it. So same as the chicken. Same as the chicken. The chicken. <laughs> <laughs> chicken came first. The chicken came first. It had to come first. <laughs> so God created the chicken, and out of the chicken came all the other chickens. Came all the yeah. other chickens. Even, even, even all those, when the all world those wings that, that Craig eat. Where do you think all those wings came from? <laughs> it came from that one chicken. It came from that one chicken, man. <laughs> <Great> <laughs> You know, so so again, that's again we always talk about it. What what does man need? Need man need what? We say it all the time. Revelation. Uh, revelation. Come on, man needs revelation. <laughs> so that takes all the spooky out. It takes all the superstition. It takes all of the you know all that stuff is moved out of the way, and you begin uh -huh. to see from the word of God everything is created from seed form. Everything starts from seed form. Amen. So mm -hmm. it ain't it ain't deep. Praise God. So if anybody ever asks you that question again about the, which one came first, the egg or the chicken, amen, you you know the answer that the word of God has taught us. Amen. Now I'm going to tell them which one you think. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? And, and you know what? And, and you're going to lose them too because they're going to start going, yeah, well, well, I believe that the chicken came first. So, so where did the chicken come from? So they it got to come back to God. You understand? It got yeah, to come but back that's, to a creator. Exactly. That's why I, I said that question right. back yes, to them sir. because some people have have revelation and uh -huh. they 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 try to go against it. Uh -huh. You know what I mean? God is in everything around them, right in front of them every day. Wakes them up every day. Yet they try <laughs> to find ways, uh -huh. or man tries to find ways to go against it or around it. You know what I mean? So that's a little yeah. more ob obvious, I think. That's another heavy question, though. Yeah. What's that? How many men did God, did God create? And that's a heavy question. Mm -hmm. Some people say thousands. Men. Right, men. So, exactly. He, he created The smartest them. people in the world probably wouldn't be able to answer that question. Right. If they ain't believers, and if they <laughs> haven't understood, like you said, that's when God right. is revealed to them. You could be as intelligent, quote unquote, as you want, but you won't be able to answer that. I'll give you a prime example. There was a little, you know how they have these little things on um, TikTok or whatever, something to be yeah, able yeah, to yeah. ask uh -huh. these little questions. So the guy had the little board up and he had the board, he had an I and he had an X. So he turned, told the girls, he said, I want you to take this out and turn it into a six. And they kept trying to figure out how to do this, you know, to turn it into a six. And I'm looking at him like, how in the world can you turn? So he said, you give up? So they said, yeah. He just took the took the pen and wrote an S. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right. laughs> you know, you're just sitting there busting your brain, you know. <laughs> and he said, and matter of fact, he said, without lifting, without lifting your pen. <laughs> yeah, he even made it even tried to stump it a little more. Bless you, brother Steve. Without, without, without. Without it on. All right, brother. Without the money. Yeah, right. You know, with the pen, exactly. So he he gonna do it. Now my wife happened to be in the best. She tried to answer the question. She ain't supposed to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Pay no attention to that woman behind that curtain. Remember that Wizard of Oz? Pay no attention. To <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> praise God. Yeah, so that's that's good stuff, man, because yeah. again, because we're talking about the gift of the Holy Spirit. And, um, and why, he, why he is so important. Why it is so important for us to to understand his ministry. You see? 
understanding his ministry. You know, God wouldn't have done it that way if it was not necessary. You know what I mean? He, he's the one who, who designed and, and orchestrated it. So we follow the pattern of what God has done. So praise God. We thank God for the reality of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so now the Trinity revealed. The Trinity revealed. Amen. Praise God. You want to want to read there? The Trinity revealed. Okay. Yeah. What happened? What page are we on? We're on page 295. 295? Yeah, 295. Mm -hmm. And we, we read the first three uh, paragraphs there. Now we're going to uh, the Trinity Revealed. The Trinity Revealed. Okay. And, and let me just say this. Uh, when we were reading in the second paragraph, when, when we, we were at uh, Christ's baptism, and it said that the Father spoke out of heaven and said, This is my beloved Son, and who I am well pleased. Mm -hmm. And also they said that they saw the dove descend upon him. <laughs> it, well, actually it was the Holy Spirit like a dove. It wasn't, actually, you know, we had the little right. things of a dove. It wasn't, he wasn't actually a dove, but, you know, but gentle. You know, historians right. saying, they were saying like, you know, it was so gentle. You know, like a dove. dove. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you know how that is. People start <laughs> worshiping doves and stuff. But um, yeah. So so we see that again, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all three being involved, being involved in. All right, so so I'm gonna pick up there the Trinity. Go ahead now, we keep reading then. We we The Trinity revealed. In this teachings, a third person is brought in as being God also. In his last and longest recorded talk with his disciples in the upper room, the evening before his crucifixion, Christ said, The Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said unto you. John 14, 26. A major part Okay. A major part. Mute your phone. Mute your phone. Mute your phone. Mute your phone. Go ahead, Nabi. Okay. A major part of Christ's last talk with the disciples dealt with the Holy Spirit, who was to come to take his place. This message is recorded in the 14th and 16th chapters of the Gospel of John. Everything in the description of, in the Bible of the three called Father, Son, and Holy Spirit presents definitely and absolutely no more and no less than three persons in the Godhead. Stop there for a second, Navi. Um, mm -hmm. How many of you? How many of you have actually um, spent time reading or meditating on John fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen? Okay. Um, so if you haven't, you have to answer that. I wouldn't like that kind of put you on the spot. But my point, um, my point, simply being. <clears throat> My point simply being is that uh, when you you and I uh, look at uh, John 14, 15, and 16, those chapters, when we look at those three chapters, what happens is we begin to get a picture again of the Holy Spirit's assignment. You know, what, what, you know, what his assignment and his ministry, the ministry that, that he began. You see? Remember Jesus said that he was going away, right? He said, I'm going away and I'm going to send you another comforter, one just like me, the paracletos. See, so his ministry, Jesus is setting up the ministry of the Holy Spirit, letting us know what he would identify him, what his job title, his role would be. You see what I'm saying? What the role of the Holy Spirit would be, what his job would be. This is how you're going to recognize him, just as the Father did about the Messiah. This is how you're going to know he's the Messiah because of mm -hmm. different prophetic things that were, you know, utterances that were giving, you know, through the prophets and so forth. So this way you would recognize the Messiah when he came. Right. And so mm -hmm. here it is, 14, 15, 16 chapter of John. Jesus is giving us a description how we would recognize him and what his job description would be, what his function would be. Amen. 
So yeah. again, it's just beautiful how the Trinity is just so clearly seen, you know, and we always share that scripture must interpret scripture. Scripture must mm -hmm. interpret scripture. I don't mm -hmm. interpret it. Scripture interprets scripture. Yourself. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't read into the Bible. I read out of it. I don't read into the Bible. My concept, my limited, you know, understanding or whatever, you know, I might get goosebumps and all of a sudden I think this is some great revelation and I can be far off. I can be, you know, the Mr. Mark. But it felt so good to me, you know, this revelation that I got that nobody ever got. And, you know, all that kind of, that's where error comes in, you know. No, Scripture interprets Scripture. So it's very plain about the ministry of the Paracletos, of the Holy Spirit. It's, he's the gift of God, and it's explaining to us and showing us first um, how the, the Trinity uh, was, was, was revealed. Okay, go ahead, continue. <laughs> It is what Nathan Wood terms in the secret of the universe, an absolute threeness and an absolute oneness. In an absolute threeness, each one is distinct from the other, from the other two. No one of the three could possibly be either of the other one, other two. And no two of the three can exist without the third. Amen. Stop mm -hmm. like this. You know what we're saying, Kenny? Elder? Mm -hmm. See? Exactly. So that's why we learn. We, you know, we begin to to learn these things because now we getting revelations from the word, from the Bible. <laughs> it's revealing. It's revealing that truth. OK, go ahead. So God is manifest as an absolute threeness. Yet he is also an absolute oneness. The three are absolutely one. <laughs> Each one is represented as God. That does not mean that. Each one is a part of God, but each one is God. That's right. Each one is the whole of God. Personally, personality is not divisible. Personality is not divisible. God cannot be divided. Is that why they said um, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit? Amen. Yes, and these are man the manifestations of God. Now, like I said, in in our in our state and. And, and where we are now, um, the, the, the ways of God and, you know, things of that, there's many things that we don't understand. Amen. Our finite mind just cannot understand certain things. We'll know it, as they say, by and by. We'll, we'll know it, you know, when, when we see him as he is, the Bible says. You know, so, so I always try to tell people, even for myself, don't, don't start tripping and try to get too deep. You know what I mean? Don't try to get too deep with it because you, you just find yourself getting confused. Just a lot of the scriptures to reveal, to reveal I, itself. I, mm -hmm. I know like when I first got saved and I, I was, you know, out there trying to, you know, get people saved, you know, from my heart. Mm -hmm. And the person said to me, they said, well, if God made Adam, who made God? Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I told I told him this. I said, "Well, just keep living. When you get to heaven, then you'll know that God is God." Amen. <laughs> Amen. That's right. They That's want right. me to tell them. They want me to tell them who made God. God right. is God. Right. <laughs> and that's one of the biggest points of atheism. That's that's one of their biggest points that they they always bring out. You know, is then who made God? You know. <laughs> so so you know. I mean. <laughs> Again, absence of revelation. If you do not receive the spirit of truth, if you're not born of the spirit, then you cannot perceive and understand. Scriptures right. say that. <laughs> Jesus said that. So if Jesus said that, in other words, if Jesus said, I'm not going to stand here and argue with you. Jesus is not going to stand there and argue with you. The proof, he, said, he tell them constantly, I already told you who I am, yet you do not believe. So, you know. I, I take that that road with Jesus, the high road. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Take the road with Jesus. Understand that? How am I going to try to prove to you? That's not my job. I can't do that. It's the work in the office of the Holy Spirit to reveal the Father and to reveal the Son. Mm -hmm. You see? And it said, Jesus said that, you know, no one comes to the Father except he draws him. And to whom he chooses to reveal himself to. You know, so 
That's how I never get like we say all the time. I never got anybody saved. We say those kind of things. You ain't never got nobody saved. You ain't never got nobody saved. You can lead them. Right. Direct them with that. You give them you give the material, you put the material yeah. out there, and the Holy Spirit does the work. Mm -hmm. Amen. Go ahead, brother. <laughs> I'm trying to take credit for what God does. <laughs> I got to say, you ain't getting no one saved. No, no. And, and you know, the church has been guilty of that. You know, they, I know I was out there. I've been there with that. You know, uh, with you know, going out and witnessing and to coming back and say, I got four people saved and, you know, and things of that nature. People kind of putting their little, getting their little uh, stripes or wearing little stars. I got eight people saved, <laughs> six people saved this week and, you know, on and on and on. And what, maybe I just got somebody to confess Jesus, you know, or whatever. Maybe they confess and get me to leave them alone. Maybe I was getting on their nerves. And, you know what I'm doing. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> So then I, I ain't get nobody saved. So, <laughs> amen. So praise God, man. Yeah, go ahead, brother. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, just by, just by God said, tell us to be, you know, he said, be careful to how we live. You know? Amen. Yes, indeed. Our lives, our lives bear witness. Go ahead. Continue. God is three in one. Each of the three is God, and each is the whole of God. The three are represented as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, three modes of beings which God is. It is not primarily three ways in which God acts, but three modes of being. The Word makes clear to us that the Father is first, the Son is second, and the Holy Spirit is third. It does not mean that one is first in deity, for all are God. It does not mean that one is greater, for all are infinite. It does not mean that one is first in time, for all are eternal. It can mean only that the Father is first, the Son is second, and the Spirit is third in logical order. <clears throat> Scripture represents the Father as a source. The eternal Son is begotten of the Father, and the eternal Spirit proceeds from the Father through the Son. Okay, so now says, right we're going to look John at 14, All right, so we're going to look at that scripture, but before we do, I just want to make this point uh, from the paragraph uh, before then. Because he said, mm -hmm. the Word makes it clear to us that the Father is first, the Son is second, mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit is third. It does not mean that one is first in deity for all of God. Amen. Now this 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 is so powerful because and you you brothers probably heard me say share that before that in our again in our finite being and understanding sometimes what happens is we we allow our minds to get in the way you know of God revealing certain things to us because we're trying to make it make sense first instead right. of revelation Revelation, then the Holy Spirit begins to now make sense of what it is that he's revealing. You know what I'm saying? So he has to he has to do that. And so I share it. I share it often like it's not like and this is where the human mind gets problems with Jesus, because the human mind is saying with the aid of the enemy that everybody giving all this praise to Jesus. What about the father? You know, y'all keep talking mm -hmm. about Jesus, you know, but what about the Father? Like, Jesus ain't supposed to be greater than the Father, you see? Or mm -hmm. uh, y'all talking about Jesus, but but I don't see nobody praising the Holy Spirit. Uh, you mm -hmm. understand what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. in the natural mind, you know, we thinking like that, but there is oneness. It ain't like God said, you know what, today, man, they gave 25 praises to your name and only two to mine. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> see, the natural mind try to get, you know, kind of trying to analyze it like, you know, nah, he's getting more praise. So when people hear us talk about Jesus, they <coughs> understand, watch the revelation. The revelation is this here, that the Father is glorified where? In, In the, the Son. Son. In the Son. The That's Father it. is glorified. See, our, our minds can't, can't quite comprehend that. You know, yep. if we don't yield to, to Scripture and yield to the, yes, yes. the Holy Spirit, you see? 
Ain't no he's getting more, that he's getting more blessings and more whatever. <coughs> See, that's us thinking that way. Because the Bible says in the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians that at the end, the son is going to hand everything back up to the father and all mm -hmm. things are going to be as it once was. Mm -hmm. See? So that's why we got to let scripture interpret it. You know, mm -hmm. let scripture show us the beauty of how this thing is unfolding. You see? And so we thank God that we, when, when we, we, we're not down this and now I'm trying to think how many times I praise the father. How many times I praise Jesus. Uh, Jesus said what? Jesus said pray to the father. In mm -hmm. my yeah. name. See, pray even, to the um, father in my name. Even David said in Psalms, um, my God said to my God, sit down on my right hand so that I make thy neck and yeah. footstools. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And that proves out to the, the point, that proves out the, the deity of Jesus, you know, as being Lord, as being mm -hmm. God. So, so that, that again, that's that, that again, our, our mind, our, our intellect and reasoning has to bow to, to, to scripture mm -hmm. and allow the Holy Spirit to begin mm -hmm. to read. So, so when I'm worshiping and I'm worshiping Jesus and, and things of that nature, number one, I'm worshiping him for revealing the father. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That here it is. He came to reveal the Father. He, he came and showed us what a son is supposed to look like. How a son mm -hmm. is supposed right. to react and how a son is to respond mm -hmm. to this love and this goodness and, and this mercy and all this, this wonderful blessings and, you know, all that kind of stuff. He's showing us. Don't go mm -hmm. after, let me show time. don't go after the provision, go after the provider. Right. Jesus mm -hmm. never went after the provision. Mm -hmm. You know what, Pastor? Yeah, come on, go ahead, brother. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, also, you know, when God said, like, you know, like, husband and wife mm -hmm. are one, one. Even man is man and woman is, 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 is female. You know what I'm saying? Female and man, they're not the same. But yet, when God bring you together, you are one. You are in agreement. And when you're not in agreement, that means that the other one is in between. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Well, scriptures say you because... become one flesh. <laughs> then the husband and wife become, you become one flesh because it's talking about covenant. It's yep. talking about coming into right, covenant. Right, right. It's coming into covenant. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. 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 Okay, now I just want to be clear. Because, you know, like I said, particularly oh, yeah. when people are listening, uh, they'll hear it later. I just want to make sure they understand what we're saying. <laughs> Amen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, but that's that's powerful. Again, revelation. Revelation is the thing that man needs, man. He, he needs that more than anything. Now, let's turn over to... to uh, oh, Go ahead. I guess it's interesting, like, that he was given this re revelation. And then, like, uh, I guess to the Jewish people, and then they, when they understood, like, what he's saying, they started to stone him or try to, like, he, they try to hurt him, you know? Sure. Yeah. And and that was, of course, we, we understand two things. Number one, it was, you know, prophesied that that would happen, you know, that they would reject him. You know, that's, that's number one. It's just like Pharaoh. God didn't harden Pharaoh's heart. People think that when they read it, they say like, oh, God made, because that would be unfair for God to make you not obey me and then tell you to obey me. That that wouldn't make sense. Simply uh, mean, when he hardened Pharaoh's heart, simply mean he gave Pharaoh a command and, and he knew Pharaoh wasn't going to obey him. So mm -hmm. Pharaoh's heart would become hardened. Mm -hmm. so, it's so it's the same thing with you and I today. You know, mm -hmm. it's not like, like, you know, like God going to make you hard, make your heart hard. But when he begins to draw, trying to draw you or me to himself, our hearts become hardened. Whether it's through our reasoning or whatever, you know, it, you mm -hmm. know, it, that, that'll happen. So thank God we understand today that the, the reality of it is that uh, uh, God is not trying to keep anyone from him or, or whatever. He sent the Holy Spirit to reveal, to mm -hmm. reveal him. To, to us. Amen. Praise God. So Amen. let's turn to, yeah, let's turn to John 14, 26. This is good stuff. Uh, because that's where um, Brother um, Nobby stopped that right there. Um, 
John 14, 20. And like I said, again, definitely over the next several weeks, uh, you brothers really I encourage you brothers, meditate on, read and meditate on John 14, 15, and 16. Amen. Can we do that? The mm -hmm. next several yes, weeks sir. while we're doing this, because there's three, three, you know, there's three, um, three different uh, lessons on the Holy Spirit. So let's let's meditate on 14, 15, and 16. Okay, so we got John chapter 14, verse 26. Somebody want to read that? But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Amen. Praise God. So here it is, like we were saying, that Jesus begins to give a description of what the the job assignment would be of the Holy Spirit. You know, mm -hmm. just like you go and you start working a job, what do they do? They give you a job description, right? You get a job description. And so that makes me recognize that this person, you, you're a porter because this is what porters do. I recognize that you are a manager because this is what managers do. You see, this is the job description of a manager, of a porter, you know, on, on down the line. So here it is, God's given this job, Jesus has given his job description concerning the Holy Spirit. See? And he would teach us all things and bring to our remembrance all the things that he said. Now, think about that. Now, he's talking to the disciples that are there, that are present. But of course, you know, we're going to have us today. We are disciples a uh, thousand or uh, two thousand years later, if you will. Now we're disciples, but it's the same Holy Spirit that is to bring to our remembrance what all the things that he said. How do, how do we know what he said? We weren't there. Say the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> yes, no, the Holy Spirit, true, but that's the, not the word of God. Exactly. Word. The word of God, because the Bible says the spirit and the word agree. So mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit will confirm the word. Mm -hmm. So if I have no word, he has nothing to confirm. He can't bring back to my remembrance something that I have not even read or something. Well, I, you understand what I'm saying? So if yes, I read right. and Jesus says that, for instance, Jesus goes on in verse 27. Watch this here. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Now, okay, so Jesus said that, right? So now the Holy Spirit brings back to my remembrance what Jesus said. You see what I'm saying? I wasn't there when he said it. Amen. I wasn't there when he said that. So he's saying that the spirit is going to bring back to your remembrance in 2022 on a Monday night, what I said over there by the Sea of Galilee, okay, 2,000 years ago. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah, man. You know, that's, I tell you, man, it's so liberating and free uh, when we begin to really uh, start grasping, as I say, more and more what's been given to us. This light that we talked about earlier in 2 Corinthians 4. You know, this earthen vessel. The excellency of that power. You know, power what? Power to reveal. Power to disclose. Amen. I mean, we can go over there for a minute, but we ain't going to do that. Amen. So, all right. So, it said God works through through the Son. And in Him and through Him, He creates. Colossians 1.16. Somebody want to read that? For in him were all things created in the heavens and upon the earth, things visible and things invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things have been created through him and unto him. Now that's powerful. See, and that's one of the things again, that's one of the things again that that man has a problem with man has a problem with that trying to understand that you know this scripture here of course talking about christ's deity amen because we know he lived in eternity past he has no beginning and no end mm -hmm. so you you're talking about jesus uh, the body that he took on to come to go to the cross but mm -hmm. the, the, the eternal spirit has always been 
You see? Mm -hmm. So so when he says, when, when the scripture is revealing, the revelation that's given to Paul here is that in him were all things created in the heavens. and the, He said, wait a minute, but I thought God did that. But then it goes on to tell us, it says that all things have been created through him and unto him. Yes. See? That the Father, everything he did was through the Son. Mm -hmm. Now, that's how our finite minds, again now, you know, get kind of stumped with it. You know, but nevertheless, if we allow scripture to interpret scripture, you, we begin to see, oh, man, what would you do with your son? OK, what would you do with your son, man? You say, son, here it is, man. Here's the inheritance. Let me give you an inheritance. Son, here, I want, I'm giving, I'm putting all things. That's why Jesus, the Bible said that. He says he put all things into the hands of his son. Yeah. See, he put everything in the yeah. hands of his son. See, it's, 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 it's just right. so beautiful, such a beautiful, and we share this all the time. We share this all the time, man. It's, 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 a, it's a simple truth, but it's so profound. Mm -hmm. The reality when we share, who came up with the concept? Father, son, you know, who came up with that? Offspring, children. Who, who came up with that? Mine didn't come up with that concept. You see what mm -hmm. I'm saying? So just yeah. as it was in earth. Here it is in heaven. God's saying, I'm showing you, I'm showing you through my son what it is to be in my family. I'm, I'm not some, I'm not some God, some ethereal spirit somewhere. I'm your father. I'm your mm -hmm. Abba. I'm your creator. I'm your source. I'm your sustainer. I'm your everything. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. See? Amen. So again, mm -hmm. he's showing us through the son. That I, God, I don't have no hidden motives and agendas. Again, our minds, you know, because our minds have been tainted with sin. Mm -hmm. See, our minds have been corrupted with sin that we can't understand this kind of pureness. You understand? Mm -hmm. We can't understand this pure. No, no, no kind of, uh, what kind of jealousy or envy or, or whatever. You, you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> they, we, our minds can't perceive that. So it, we can't, and, and, and the more we begin to understand, it, it, uh, God, so let me finish uh, this thought. Let me finish this thought. Hold this thought. How that, the well, father the saw more his, we, saw the more we see that, away. the more we see that, the more we see that, the more we see that, what, when we see that, what it does, again, is it causes or should cause us to appreciate more God. Mm -hmm. his, again, his motives are pure. So as a son, I have no problem trusting him i have no problem trusting him see so the holy spirit is revealing to us and showing us look at this relationship between the father and the son amen yeah. praise god praise god what is it you wouldn't do for your kid you know i mean if you're a good father i mean there's nothing you won't do you let them eat before you eat yeah i mean you know we can go on and on yeah amen <clears throat> So praise God, man. I mean, stuff is so beautiful. The picture of it is so beautiful. Okay, so where, where we at now? Let me see where we at. Okay, we got Christ it. works now among people through the Spirit. Okay, go ahead. Start reading. The Spirit, like the Father, is unseen. His chief work is to reveal the Son. And in the Son, He reveals the Father. Therefore, His ministry, although unseen, is to reveal the fullness of the Godhead to man and through man we are living in what is termed the dispensation of the holy spirit it is the holy spirit who has made the father and the son so real to us stop for one second just want to just touch that when he says mm -hmm. we are living in what is termed the dispensation of the holy spirit and what that simply means is is that there's a time uh, of of each uh event there's a time. I don't know. I don't know when it ends, but we know the advent of the beginning of it was when the Holy Spirit descended on in the right. upper room when he came in the upper room in Pentecost and in the book of Acts, the second chapter of Acts on the day of Pentecost. That began the dispensation, if you will, of the Holy mm -hmm. Spirit. Amen. That began his work. OK, you know, in terms of now that the son is gone. Remember, John seven thirty nine. Jesus said that the Bible said the Holy Spirit had not yet been given because Christ had not yet been glorified. 
Right. And once he once he went to the cross, once he spilt that blood and he took that precious, holy, sinless blood and sprinkled it upon the judgment seat in heaven, and that judgment seat became a mercy seat. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So the Holy Spirit yeah. then came. Amen. I just wanted to to, to get that out there, uh, that we are living in the time of the Holy Spirit's dispensation. Go ahead, uh, beloved. Therefore, a knowledge of the Holy Spirit is essential to us. Mm -mm. Today, there is a real need for the definite study of the person and ministry of the Holy Spirit in us and through us. That's right. A small portion of attention has been given to the present day work of the Holy Spirit in comparison to that which has be, been given to the earthly life of Christ. A.J. Gordon, in, the, in his book, The Ministry of the Holy Spirit, asked, why not employ the same method in writing about the third person of the Trinity as we use in considering the second person? In his book, he follows that method. And we wish to use this method here in our study of the Holy Spirit. Many stories of the life of Christ have been written, beginning with, the, with his incarnation and ending with his ascension from Mount Oliver, from Olivet. The Savior lived before his incarnation and, his, and has continued his ministry since the time of his ascension to the Father. Yet it is given to us a definiteness of impression to distinguish his visible life from his invisible so also, as we study the person of the and ministry of the Holy Spirit, we find it advantageous to separate his special present day ministry on this earth from his ministry before and after. Mm -hmm. That ministry began on the day of Pentecost and shall continue until the second coming of Christ. When Christ came to the earth as a man, he had a ministry to fulfill. And when he had accomplished it, he returned unto the Father. His ministry had a time limit. So also in his appointed time, the Holy Spirit came into the earth, into the world, having a certain definite mission to fulfill. This ministry is being carried on now in us and through us and shall continue until completed. When he and his appointed time shall ascend into heaven. Praise God. Praise God. That is so loaded. That is, that is so loaded, I, I tell you. Now, I want to back up, go back up to where um, Brother Steve was reading there, the bullet point. Um, um, the, the one, two, three, the fourth bullet point from the top, where it says mm -hmm. the Savior. The Savior lived for yeah. his incarnation and has continued his ministry since the time of his ascension to the Father. Yet it gives us it gives to us a definiteness of impression to distinguish his visible life from his invisible. Now go ahead, read the next bullet point again. So also, as we study the person and ministry of the Holy Spirit, we find it advantageous to separate his special present day ministry on this earth from his ministry before and after. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. And so one of the <laughs> things that he's sharing one of the things he's sharing there, notice he said, Jesus had a ministry before and after. Mm -hmm. What is Jesus' ministry now? Anybody? To intercede. He intercedes. Okay. What is his office that he stands in now? At the right hand of the Father. What is his office that he's, his functioning office that he's doing now? Well, he's interceding for us. No, I understand. And you're right. What you're saying is right. He's, he's our advocate. Okay. All right. Let's do that right quick. Turn over to Hebrews. Turn in your Bibles to Hebrew. Let's turn to Hebrews. The book of Hebrews. <laughs> Hebrews chapter three, starting at verse one. This is the Apostle Paul. I believe he's a writer of the book of Hebrews. It says, oh, it, it says priest. Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of the heavenly calling, yes, sir, consider the apostle, the sent one, 
and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him who appointed him as Moses also was faithful in all his house. For this one has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who built the house has more honor than the house. For every house is built by someone, but he who built all things is God. And mm -hmm. Moses indeed was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which would be spoken afterward. But Christ as a son over his own house, watch this, whose house we are, if we hold fast the confidence and rejoicing of the hope firm to the end. My God. Amen. Mm -hmm. So this Amen. is Christ's ongoing ministry here. Now, now look at, go down. Now let, let's uh, go down here. Let's go to chapter four. Go to chapter four. Chapter four. Now let's look at verse 14 to 16. It says, seeing then that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the son of God, let us hold fast our confession. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find great grace to help in time of need. My God. So that's his ongoing ministry. Jesus is no longer physically here in the earth, right? So mm -hmm. his ongoing ministry is over the house of God. Who's the house of God? We are. We're the house of God. Mm -hmm. So to, to, to Brother Steve's point, go to chapter 7. Go to brother, uh, to brother Steve's point here. Chapter 7. Chapter 7. Mm -hmm. And just want to look at one verse of scripture, verse 25. And it's talking about Jesus. And it says, therefore, he is also able to save to the uttermost those who come to God through him since he always lives to make intercession for them. Praise God. Praise mm -hmm. God. And then we can find that mm -hmm. even in Romans chapter 8, you know, and so forth, talking about the fact of Jesus' ministry. So the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit now, as we said, his job, his assignment is to come and to reveal to us what? That Jesus is praying for us. He's our high priest. And we understand before, you know, when we look at it, you know, the the high priest, when we looked in the Old Testament, the people would come and bring what? Their sacrifices, they'll come, yeah. and, you know, and, and so forth. They'll bring it to the high priest. So now, you and I, this is what you and I do today. Turn over mm -hmm. to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. I didn't know we were going to go this way, but it's okay. Uh, Romans chapter 12. Somebody read verse 1. It says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Amen. See that? Wow. See, just as they brought the sacrifice. Now, what, we, what sacrifices we bring? Ourselves. Ourselves. So, yeah. We're bringing ourselves now. That's our reasonable mm -hmm. service of worship to God. That we present yeah. ourselves by the mercies of God. We come to God. Now, remember, we are the, he is the high priest. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says, according to Peter, turn over to 1 Peter. I didn't know we were going this way. Uh, <laughs> let's, see let's go to 1 Peter. All of this is going to be on tape, so you'll be able to play it and go back. Let's go to 1 Peter chapter 2. Somebody read um, somebody read verse number verse number 4 down to verse number 10. Uh, have the New King James he all right with me, new or old. Okay. All right. Coming to him as to as to li living some rejected indeed by men, but ch but chosen by God and 
and precious. Talking about Jesus. Go on. Mm -hmm. You also, as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it is also contained in the scriptures. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect precious. And he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Mm -hmm. Therefore, to you who believe, he is precious. But to those who are disobedient, mm -hmm. the stone which the builders rejected has mm -hmm. become the chief cornerstone. Mm -hmm. And a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. Yes. They stumble being disobedient to the word no, to which they also were appointed. Mm -hmm. But you are a chosen generation, mm -hmm. a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who once were not a people, but are now the people of God, who had not obtained mercy, but have, but now have obtained mercy. My God. Mm -hmm. Is that powerful or what, man? Come on, man. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Amen. That is that is powerful stuff. So we, we see yeah. today, again, we see today that we see the ministry of the Holy Spirit is to reveal Jesus. So he mm -hmm. reveals Jesus' present-day ministry to us. And most churches and, and many churches and many believers, uh, you know, are, are absent of this kind of revelation. You know, when we talk about what is, what is our function today? What is, my, what is my ministry? To go to church? You know, to, to, to get some blessings? You see? So when we return, like we say, to biblical pattern, we see biblical yeah. pattern. It tells us very clearly that the Holy Spirit is now glorifying Jesus in the yeah. earth. Amen. Mm -hmm. And so what he's doing is he is now showing and teaching you and I how to look to the high priest. Amen. As the priest, the royal priesthood. Amen. Mm -hmm. Christ is praying over us. Remember, we used to share it all the time. John chapter 17. Jesus mm -hmm. said that Jesus is praying for the church. He's not praying for the world. He's praying for right. his church. Mm -hmm. And his church prays for what? Who remembers? The world. The world. The world. Jesus is praying for his church. And his church is praying for the world. The high priest is praying over the priests. And the priests are the ones that, that touch the people. We're the one who touch the people and bring mm -hmm. prayers and supplications and, you know, whatever it is. We're the ones who bring that to the high priest. Just like we were saying with salvation, with salvation, is that what happens is with salvation is that you and I are not saving anyone. The Holy Spirit uses you and I to bring mm -hmm. the words of life to, to an individual. And then as that individual begins to acknowledge those words and open yeah. their heart up to the Holy Spirit, amen, yeah. then when we pray for them or what have you, what we're literally doing is we're literally touching the throne. We're, we're literally touching our high priest, praying over that individual, that person. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. Because they can't go into the holies of holy. Right. Because yeah. that blood is not on them. You and right. I have been given access because of that blood to come yeah. into the holies of holy, man. This is so powerful. Christian and believers, we don't understand this thing, man. And we got to get taught this stuff. You mm -hmm. see? Because if we get in our function, and we say the Father is in his element, his function, the Holy Spirit's mm -hmm. in his, Jesus is in his, we need to be in ours. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And that beauty That's of right. that flow, the flow would be so beautiful. The flow would be so beautiful. But God is so awesome. Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you tonight, Father. We 
We honor you once again, Father. You have not disappointed us, Lord God. You, We thank you for opening us up, Holy Spirit, and revealing, pulling back the veil and, and giving us further glimpses into the reality of the person of Jesus the Christ. We thank you tonight. We're so honored. We ask you, Holy Spirit, that you would seal these truths in our heart and in our minds. And we pray that any person, any man, woman, boy, girl, that would hear these truths, Holy Spirit, yes. that you have material to work with, that you yes. would draw them and you would cause them to see that which they have not seen, that they too may enter into the holies of holy and have fellowship in the presence of a holy God, that they would mm -hmm. know him as Abba Father. So, Father, we thank you again tonight. Holy Spirit, seal these truths in our heart. Bring it back to our remembrance in the times of need. In Jesus the Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen.